Uh, morning guys and uh, welcome to my little workshop. Uh, today I've just taken the foil out of my boat and I've come across this crack as you can just see here on my centreboard here. A nasty little crack. Uh, can you get a good picture of it? Yeah, there it is. Yeah, often these are caused by often with the boom just dropping down in the bottom of the boat and just chipping the trailing edge of your centreboard. So I'm going to have a go at repairing it. And this centreboard has got an epoxy uh, finish to it, uh, and it's in the clear part uh, of the centreboard. So I'm going to use clear gel coat. Uh, so here we've got the West system, the 105 and the 205 hardener. I know the companies um, sell them in smaller packs than what I've got, got here, and they're really quite handy to have in your toolbox. So this repair, using the West system epoxy, it's going to be taken over to two days because uh, it takes that sort of time to harden up. If you want a championship, uh, you can use uh, gel coat filler. Here it is. For me, gel coat filler is good. It's, it's good to do a quick repair uh, if you were to championship and you had one of these uh, cracks. Uh, you could use gel coat filler. I think it's, uh, it gets you through the regatta. But to do a professional job that will be long lasting, go back to the 105 epoxy resin. The process, even if you're using it with gel coat filler, is the same, it's the same uh, process. Uh, so let's go through it. Uh, so how am I gonna do it? First thing, just looking at it, just put some uh, gloves on, because epoxy glue really does not like uh, uh, bare flesh. So just get some gloves on, and then just looking at the equipment I'm gonna use. I've got a selection of sandpaper, of course the glue, mixing sticks, a little mixing pot, masking tape, a bit of acetone to clean anything off my hands or whatever, and some cellar tape. So let's go through it. So here we have this little nasty little chip. And what we've got to do is sort of feather the edge. So what do I mean by feathering an edge? This is so the glue will stick to the foil. If I try and just fill that up now, it'll just chip off because we haven't got a good edge for it to stick to. So I'm going to feather it. So feathering it is really, I'm just going to put an edge on it. So what we do here, we can do two options here. We've got a file, just a standard file, and we're going to file this edge to create a sharp edge. Just one side of the foil, so here, so I'm going to file it, yeah, and put an edge. As you see, I'm going at an angle, and I'm going to create like a dig out, like you're digging out a hollow in it. Then the other way, you could use a bit of sandpaper. Here, it's just some coarse, wet and dry, this is grade 80, and I can put it round this file. And you notice the file's curved, so I can curve and make a nice curve into this crack. So here with the sandpaper, round the curved part of the file, I can now just sand what we call a feathered edge. You probably think it looks quite severe, but it's not. I quite like using this 80 grade sandpaper with this rounded file. Puts a nice clean edge. As you can see, it's coming quite sharp. I'm just checking. Yeah, just checking how that looks. Yeah, you can see, you can see how the cut out, yeah. And I'm just making sure that it's come right through on a sharp edge on the other side of the foil, yep. Here, you can see the feathered edge, and that just means you've now got more surface area for the glue to stick to the board, and then hopefully you'll have a perfect job and a solid job. So, next process. So now we've got to put a little bit of backing piece to, to it, to hold it, so flip the board over. So flipping the board over, yeah, and I get a bit of my sellotape here, just a bit of M3. Using sellotape is because the epoxy doesn't stick to plastic, and you can see, you can just see if you can see the edge, yeah, is over, yeah, so it projects past the centerboard trailing it 
trailing edge. And now this is where we start mixing the uh, 105 and the 205 hardener. Get my little mixing pot. And here, it's quite handy, we've got the uh, syringes. So really, it's a ratio of five to one, but I'll mix it up. Nice, good. You can say you've got a good working time of at least 20 minutes to half an hour. You can want to, you want to be really good. It's just making sure you don't splash any of it. The uh, epoxy all over your really good foil. You can just mask off the area. All masked off neatly around the feathered edge. And now let's do the fun part of slowly mixing this gel coat, really making sure epoxy glue is well stirred up. Yeah, and then this is where, quite easy, put in a little drop in. I'm trying to put on as much as I can so it just projects above the uh, surface. Yeah, making sure it goes out past the leading edge and that's why we put the cell tape and extended it past the uh, trailing edge. So I can put this epoxy and let it go over the edge, past it. Beautiful. Good. There. And I'm happy with that. Really happy with that. Good. So now with this repair, I'm literally just going to leave it. Normally, we'd, I'd leave this for 24 hours and in the morning we'll have another go at just sanding it down. Okay, and we'll see you later for the sanding down process. Hi guys and welcome back. Uh, so here we are now, uh, coming back to the board after it being dried really hard now. What's interesting, to get the drying time down a little bit, you can add heat uh, and epoxy will go off quicker with a bit of heat. And so let's have a look at our job. Uh, I'm going to take the masking tape off. And there we are, gone. Good job. So let's have a look what we're left with. I'll turn the board back over. So hopefully you may be able to see that. As you can see, now the epoxy with that plastic tape at the back has made the edge proud, which is going to be great to sand and get smooth again. I'm just going to put a little bit of masking tape back on. Uh, so let's have a look at our finishing uh, process. So we're going to sand that down. So let's have a look what we've got. I'm going to start off with a coarse sandpaper. Very, I'm going to start off with a 120. This is wet and dry, the one with black wet and dry, so you can use that dry or wet. And I go for 120 here, under there I've got a, two, a 280. Uh, and then under here, little strips of 320, hence to 400, 6, 1000 and even 1200 grade. So I've got all the grades running right through and you can see this job, this part of the process is going to take a little bit more time. So let's have a look. What's my first job? Let's start off with the uh, course of sandpaper. Now there's two ways, what I do is use a little block, just a little sanding block, um, made up out of some old wood, making sure one edge is flat, yeah, so I can do the job and I can really grind into that using my little block. So okay, I've just got my strip of 120. I'm gonna use this dry. Uh, if you like, you can use it dry, and I'll start sanding away. And you're just making sure the block sits flat down, don't roll the edges over, flat to the trailing edge of the board. And this is where the, the skill comes in, just focusing sort of on that edge of the sanding block into the trailing edge. And you can see I've left the uh, masking tape on, so I'm really not scratching a big area of me, me board here. But this is quite coarse, 120, and I'm just going to roll over away. Here we go, rubbing away. Uh, I've taken a little bit, I'm still quite proud there, but I'm going to work on the trailing edge now a little bit. So what I'm going to do here is just making sure, this is where 
You've really got to be careful. The longer block, there is a reason for that. The longer block, a little bit longer. And the length of the sandpaper, again, this is 120. Put it nicely over the block. And here, I'm just working down on the top of the edge, middle of the sanding block this time, not at the edge, in the middle. And you're carefully just sanding that down. A big block means you don't hollow this trailing edge. So really careful, just take your time, you won't take much. And you may notice this side is really quite flush. Yeah, that side is quite flush where the, uh, the tape was. And you see now it's just a little bump. You can just see perhaps to get close up, taking a little bit off, but it's still proud a little bit. I don't know if you can see it. You can see that next to my jumper. A little bit proud. Just take your time. Take your time. So let's just move to some wet and dry using wet. So here, a little bit of water. Use the uh, old washing up liquid. I always like washing up liquid. It just gives it a little bit, I don't know, a little bit of bite uh, with the sandpaper. Uh, just does quite, quite well. And hence, using dip in the water, using water. Yeah. And now you can sand it. And now you can see how there's no dust. Again, we can just keep sighting it. Yeah, that looks pretty straight to me. It's looking pretty good. See how we're looking at looking at all edge now. There's the repair. Yeah, looking really good. The bumps gone and the trailing edge is still flush. And now I'm going to work through uh, the other grades of sandpaper. Yeah. Let's move to the 280. Back to my small block. Just working down into the trailing edge. Again, remember, don't roll over the edge to make that edge really sharp. Good. So that was the 280 grade. Now I'm going to work to my 320. This is the process going through it, 320, now going up to the 400. And here I might just have a look at the other side of the board where we have the sticky tape, yeah? That is where it is on the other side, yeah? Can't hardly see it, uh, it feels so good. But I'm just gonna go, yeah, over. I'm just going to go for the 600 grade. That of Lily doesn't need much. Might just do a little trailing edge. That's it with a 600. Good. Whizzing over again. Good. With my 600 grade. Again. Now let's go to the. Uh, what are we on here? I'm on my 1000 grade here. So 600, I think. And let's just finish off with my 1200 grade. Yep, yeah, there's my 1200 grade. Good, lovely job. Okay, so let's get my towel and dry off the uh, board and let's have a look at it. Let's have a look at my job. Yep, yeah. really, there's the. Uh, the repair, yeah, good as new, can't even see it. So let's really finish off, if you're really keen to do the job, uh, I'll show you. This is uh, the sort of the professional's outfit. I use the uh, Farrow Club, whatever it is, French or something or other. It's the uh, polishing compounds. Uh, and I set off with the uh, G3, uh, which is like a rubbing compound and it's slightly coarser then G6, which is slightly finer, and finally to this finishing compound, which is super, super fine, and actually creates pretty well the finish that I'm more than happy with. Uh, I use a buffing machine, 
yeah, takes the strain out of it. But literally, just get a bit of elbow grease behind it and a good polish up. Yeah, good polish up. Yeah. Let's use G6. For my uh, finishing compound, called finishing compound G10. Uh, this is super fine, very fine paste, this one. Um, you know, and literally, once you've done with G10, it's as good as polish in my book. Uh, you know, the people always say, you know, do you finish off with a, a polish? Well, I think G10 is about as good as you need to to go as a racing finish. I know, uh, and I'm dead chuffed. Look at that, I'm looking at it. That is super good satisfaction. Faction, looking down the trailing edge, good as new. This board is ready to go racing this season. Ready for the 420 Nationals, this board. And uh, I'm more than happy uh, to put that back in my boat. So anyway, thank you uh, for watching my video clip. I hope it was helpful. Uh, and uh, yeah, good luck for this uh, sailing season. All the best, ciao.